Welcome to our Healthy Care channel, where we'll be discussing the top 10 medications that cause liver damage. The liver plays a crucial role in filtering and processing harmful substances in our bodies. However, certain medications can lead to severe liver damage, and it's important for us to understand them to protect our liver health. In this video, we'll delve into these medications and provide information on the early symptoms of drug-induced liver damage. The last one is the main one, so stay until the end. This will help you recognize and respond promptly to any signs related to your liver health. The tenth medication on our list is the combination of amoxicillin with clavulinate, a widely prescribed antibiotic known for its effectiveness in treating various infections like sinusitis, tonsillitis, pneumonia, and urinary tract infections. Despite its efficacy, there's a significant concern associated with this medication. It has been linked to numerous cases of acute liver injury a serious condition characterized by sudden liver damage that can have severe consequences if not promptly addressed. Therefore, it's crucial for healthcare professionals to be mindful of this risk when prescribing or administering amoxicillin with clavulinate. Patients should be closely monitored, especially if they're using the medication for prolonged periods or in high doses. They should also be educated about the signs of liver injury and advised to seek immediate medical attention if they experience symptoms such as jaundice, dark urine, extreme fatigue, nausea, vomiting, or abdominal pain, as these may indicate liver problems requiring urgent intervention. The ninth medication known to potentially harm the liver is diclofenac. While all anti-inflammatories, like ibuprofen and naproxen, carry a slight risk of liver damage, it's relatively rare. However, diclofenac is particularly notable for its higher risk compared to other anti-inflammatories when it comes to causing liver injuries. Liver damage from diclofenac can occur weeks or even months after starting to use the medication. Hence, it's crucial to understand that diclofenac not only affects the kidneys but also poses a risk to the liver. Stay vigilant about any symptoms and consult a healthcare professional if you experience any concerns while using this medication. The eighth medication we'll discuss is amiodaron, also known as anchorone, commonly prescribed by cardiologists to manage cardiac arrhythmias. This medication stands out for its effectiveness in significantly improving arrhythmias and even clearing 24-hour Holter records. However, it's essential to recognize that amiodarone carries one of the highest indexes of side effects among medications. It can impact various organs, including the thyroid, lungs, skin, and yes, the liver as well. Due to this extensive range of potential side effects, its usage has become more restricted compared to the past, reserved for specific cases where the benefits outweigh the risks. While amiodarone typically doesn't cause acute liver injury, it's important to note that its harmful effects on the liver may take weeks to months to manifest. Healthcare professionals and patients alike should remain vigilant for any signs of liver problems while using this medication and report any concerns promptly to their healthcare provider. The seventh group of medications that can potentially affect your liver are anticonvulsants. Specifically, medications like phenytoin, commercially known as Hydental, and valproic acid, known as Depocaine, are noteworthy for their association with liver damage. Hydental has been observed to start causing liver injury immediately after initiation of treatment, while the effects of Depocaine may become apparent between one and six weeks into therapy, underscoring the importance of regular monitoring of liver enzymes. In addition to these, carbamazepine and lamotrigine are also recognized for their potential to cause liver injuries although such occurrences are much less common. Thus, 
individuals prescribed these anticonvulsant medications should be vigilant about any signs of liver dysfunction and ensure regular liver function tests to monitor their liver health closely. The sixth medication known to potentially cause liver injury is allopurinol. Often prescribed for individuals with elevated uric acid levels or those suffering from gout, especially when dietary modifications alone aren't sufficient to manage the condition. Allopurinol effectively lowers uric acid levels in the body, thereby preventing gout attacks. However, it's crucial to understand that allopurinol can have adverse effects on the liver. Liver injuries associated with allopurinol use can occur rapidly, sometimes within days or weeks after initiating treatment. Hence, patients starting allopurinol therapy should undergo careful monitoring for any signs of liver damage. Regular medical follow-up is essential to promptly detect any issues and adjust the treatment plan as needed. Additionally, patients should promptly report any unusual symptoms that may arise during allopurinol use to their healthcare provider. Despite these risks, it's important to note that allopurinol remains a valuable therapeutic option for many patients with gout or elevated uric acid levels. However, its usage should be managed cautiously, with close attention paid to liver health. The fifth medication of concern is methotrexate, a widely utilized treatment for various conditions including rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and certain types of cancer. One crucial aspect of methotrexate use is the necessity for continuous monitoring of liver enzymes due to the common occurrence of liver injury associated with this medication. Liver injury induced by methotrexate can span from mild to severe, and in severe cases, may result in significant liver damage if not promptly identified and managed. To mitigate these risks, healthcare providers typically conduct regular liver enzyme tests for patients on methotrexate. These tests serve to promptly detect any signs of liver damage, enabling adjustments in medication or treatment strategies to prevent major complications. Adhering to medical guidelines regarding methotrexate dosage and frequency of use is paramount in minimizing the likelihood of adverse effects including hepatic ones. In certain scenarios, depending on the patient's health status and response to treatment, healthcare providers may explore alternative therapeutic options to mitigate the risk of liver injury associated with methotrexate. The fourth category of medications that can potentially impact the liver is antifungals. Specifically, fluconazole and idraconazole, commonly employed in the treatment of candidiasis and nail mycosis, are associated with hepatotoxicity in certain susceptible individuals. Given this association, it's crucial for individuals using these medications to treat mycosis to be vigilant about recognizing signs of hepatic toxicity, as mentioned earlier. Prompt identification of such symptoms can facilitate timely intervention and management to mitigate the risk of liver damage associated with antifungal therapy. The third group of medications that can impact the liver are antipsychotics, specifically risperidone and quetiapine, marketed under the name Seroquel. These antipsychotic medications are not only utilized in the treatment of psychoses but are also employed for cases of refractory depression, which refers to depressions unresponsive to conventional treatment. Both risperidone and quetiapine carry the potential to cause liver damage, primarily through a process known as drug-induced cholestasis. This condition occurs when there's an interruption or reduction in the flow of bile from the liver crucial for fat digestion and waste elimination. When medications like risperidone and quetiapine interfere with this process, bile can accumulate in the liver, leading to potential hepatic damage. Therefore, patients undergoing treatment with these medications should undergo careful monitoring for any signs of liver problems to ensure early detection and intervention. The second medication known to potentially affect the liver is methyldopa. 
methyl dopa is commonly prescribed to manage high blood pressure and is particularly favored for its safety, being the most prescribed medication for pregnant women with hypertension. Despite its overall safety profile, methyl dopa has been associated with potential liver damage. As such, its use is not recommended for individuals with pre-existing liver conditions such as fibrosis or cirrhosis. It's important to note that adverse effects on the liver can manifest up to 12 weeks after initiating treatment with methyl dopa. Regular monitoring of patients using this medication is crucial to promptly detect any signs of liver impairment. This monitoring helps prevent deterioration and ensures that hypertension treatment does not inadvertently harm liver health. Patients with a history of liver diseases should engage in discussions with their healthcare providers to explore safer alternative treatment options. The top drug on the list is paracetamol, which is widely recognized as the leading cause of drug-induced liver failure. Typically, liver injury isn't triggered by the standard dosage but rather by excessive doses. Unfortunately, due to its widespread availability, some individuals misuse paracetamol, taking more than the recommended amount. For instance, instead of adhering to the appropriate dosage for a headache, they might ingest three tablets at once, repeating this overdose pattern. It's crucial to underscore that when taken as directed, paracetamol is safe. Doctors routinely prescribe it to infants to alleviate fever or pain without encountering issues. However, surpassing the recommended dose can be perilous. Shockingly, more than a third of liver failure cases attributed to medications are linked to paracetamol. An overdose of paracetamol can precipitate acute liver failure, which carries a high mortality rate and often necessitates a liver transplant if the organ fails to regenerate itself. Unlike the kidneys, where hemodialysis can sometimes reverse renal failure temporarily, the liver typically requires a transplant once compromised. Moreover, factors like alcohol consumption, genetic predisposition, and concurrent intake of other medications on the list can heighten the risk of liver injury. Liver damage from paracetamol typically initiates within one to three days following ingestion, with symptoms manifesting two to four days later. Fortunately, an antidote for paracetamol overdose exists acetylcysteine, also known as fluomucil which serves as an expectorant and is used for certain cases of OCD and trichotillomania. This antidote proves effective in safeguarding the liver against paracetamol overdose. However, if you've exceeded the recommended dosage, it's imperative to seek immediate medical attention at an emergency room and explain the situation to the doctor, rather than risking the need for a liver transplant. It's essential to recognize that just because a medication isn't listed here doesn't mean it can't cause liver damage. Vigilance and adherence to prescribed dosages are paramount to protecting liver health. The roster of medications carrying hepatotoxic potential is expansive, encompassing antiretrovirals, vitamins like niacin, various antibiotics, supplements, and even herbal teas a topic explored in a separate video. Given the liver's pivotal role in bodily functions, any malfunction can have far-reaching consequences. Thus, exercising extreme caution when using medications is paramount to prevent drug-induced hepatitis and in severe instances, fulminant hepatitis. Fulminant hepatitis represents a grave complication affecting a notable fraction of individuals with acute drug-induced hepatitis often characterized by symptoms like jaundice and yellowing of the skin. Shockingly, among these cases, only approximately 20% survive without the necessity of a liver transplant. This underscores the critical importance of vigilant medication use and prompt medical intervention to safeguard liver health and overall well-being. To learn more about this topic, please like the video and subscribe to my Healthy Care channel. 
I want to express my gratitude once again for your viewership and support in watching this video today. I send my best wishes for you to always be safe, prosperous, and happy.